Hello again, and welcome back to Operations Management. In this session, we're going to be looking at Little's Law again from the financial perspective, and we're going to do some worked problems. If you recall from our last session, we were able to use information found on accounting statements to determine how long a dollar travels through a process. We're going to be doing more of that in this session. Looking at this flow diagram, we can actually take information that we can find on an accounting statement and take a look at it in terms of the process flow. If we're looking at cost of goods sold, many times it's broken down by how much is being spent on raw materials, how much is going to be spent on purchase parts, and so forth. And we can also take a look at how much is left in inventory. In the last one, we looked at total inventory. And in this one, we're just going to look at the inventory for the raw materials. So here, our cost of goods sold entering into the process of just raw materials is costing us $43,000 a year. So that would be our throughput rate if we're just tracking raw material dollars. The inventory is how much raw material is left at the end of the year. And that turned out to be $3,500,000. When we're going to be converting our raw materials into some other kind of work and process, we do apply labor and resources. So sometimes you'll see that as well on your accounting statement. But in this case, even though it's there, we're not going to be using that for our Little's Law analysis. We're really going to be concentrating on our throughput rate and our inventory because we want to find out how long it takes for a raw material dollar to get through the process. So how long does it take? We're going to take a look at Little's Law. We're going to use the calculation of our flow time equaling our inventory divided by our throughput. In this case, our inventory is our raw material inventory, which was posted as $3,500,000. And our throughput rate is the cost of goods sold of just the raw materials, which was $43,000 in a year. So. When we calculate the flow time, it's going to be flow time equals inventory divided by the throughput rate. And as you can see by the calculations, we end up with a flow time of 0.081 years. Now, a lot of people can't get their heads around 0.081. So we're going to convert it to weeks. And there's 52 weeks in a year. So we're just going to multiply our 0.81 times 52 and that gives us 4.23 weeks. So what we're saying here is a dollar of raw material entering into the process will sit there for 4.23 weeks by the time it gets out of the process, okay? Now we can do this for all different kinds of processes within our overall organization. We can do this for the raw materials in a fabrication setting. We can take a look at items going through assembly. We can take a look at items going through packaging. And when we do that, we can determine the flow time at each sub process, which tells us which sub process is taking the longest. If you recall, one of the reasons why we're taking a look at these processes is to make them more efficient and more cost effective. So by using Little's law, by evaluating these sub-processes, we can figure out what is taking the longest and also how much it's costing us. So when we go and look at process improvements, we're going to start targeting those sub-processes that are taking the longest and those that are costing us the most. We can even apply Little's Law to take a look at how long it takes for us to get our money back from customers once we've built them. In this case, our cost of our throughput rate is our net sales. We're billing to our customer, in this case, $82,000 in a year. But sitting in our accounts receivable, our inventory, things that have not yet been paid, is $9,600,000. So we can use our throughput rate of net sales and our inventory of accounts receivable to determine on average, how long it takes for a build order to be paid. So here we have it. Our flow time is our inventory divided by our throughput rate, and that's what we're going to calculate. 
Our accounts receivable was 9.6 thousand. Our net sales was 82 thousand per year. So it takes 0.117 of a year for us to get paid. Well, again, we're going to convert that to weeks, so we multiply that by 52, and it takes us over six weeks from the time we bill our customer, on average, to the time we get it back. That's a long time. So what we can actually do is say, well, if this is taking us a long time, why don't we take a look at the process itself and see whether we can shorten it? But by using Little's Law, we can actually figure out how long it takes from the time we put a dollar out to start manufacturing something to the time we actually get money back from the customer, which is known as the cost to cash time. So we figure out how long it takes to get through the factory, how long it takes for an invoice to be paid. We add that together and that gives us how long it takes overall from cost to cash. This ends our sequence on Little's Law from the financial perspective as well as our flow perspective. But we're going to be coming back to it later in the semester as well. But next time, we're going to be talking about critical path methods and flow charting and process diagrams. I'll see you then.